Well, good morning. It's Fred Cole, Jesus for the Nation, Stillwater, Oklahoma. This is the second video in the series, History of Man. So far, we have come 4,000 years. We've come up to the point of the birth of the Lord Jesus. Four days have passed of the six days. The birth of the Lord Jesus becomes the center of time from eternity past to the eternity forward. The center of time when God comes to live with man. Pretty interesting times. The scripture says, it's a good thing I don't get paid to do this. It's pretty, been pretty interesting morning. The scripture I wanted to read is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Isaiah received that prophecy 700 years before the Lord Jesus was born. Uh, part of these, uh, this video series is wanting to convince you that the prophecies that were spoken in the past that have come forward are a sign for us that the prophecies that are yet to be to be fulfilled will also be fulfilled and so that's one of the things that we're going to be looking at in these next two days a thousand year type days will be the prophecies that are uh, predicting the things that will happen in our day maybe next event death resurrection of the Lord Jesus Isaiah again Isaiah 53 I highly encourage you to memorize Isaiah 53 and Psalm 20 Isaiah 53 3 he was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and as one from whom men hide their faces he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. And we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He has oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before his shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people? English Standard Version Less than 40 years later, Israel ceases to be a nation. Israel had been a thorn in the flesh to the Roman kingdom from the very beginning. We know what was going on in the times of the Lord Jesus. Well, the Romans just finally got fed up. And so they encircled Jerusalem. It happened to be on a holy period of time so that the the uh, population of Jerusalem was greatly increased 
They lay siege to Jerusalem. It was before it was over. They said that over a million people had died in Jerusalem. Tremendous uh, destruction. But Rome had decided they were going to put an end to the rebellious Israelite state. They couldn't do it. They just killed them off and scattered them. But you can't put an end to Israel. It is a God-given gift to man. And we're going to see the prophecies in a little while that talk about that. Second temple destroyed. This was the temple that was begun by Zerubbabel in roughly 500 B.C. But it was greatly enhanced by Herod, a pagan king. And the reason why the Temple Mount itself doesn't look like a mountain, which it is, is Herod tore down part of the mountain and flattened out the area where the uh, today there's a place for the temple to be rebuilt. They cleaned it off, but after that, the Muslims put the Dome of the Rock Mosque and the, uh, the other mosque on the temple site. And so today, whenever you see that big flat area, just know that isn't what that is. And whenever the Muslims think that uh, Abraham sacrificed Ishmael offered him on that mountain. Well, the Israelites know that Abraham offered Isaac. So, temples destroyed, 70 AD. Uh, whenever I was looking for a, a reference point, the Israelites have been keeping track of time from the time of Abraham. We believe they're 200 years off, but still, their time and so uh, as far as the calendar I was trying to figure out how I could tell uh, what the time was around the time of the birth of the Lord Jesus and the answer is Israelites know when their temple was destroyed and when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD and that turns out to be about 3831 on the Hebrew calendar so if you if they're really wrong 200 years that would put the destruction of temples somewhere around uh, 4,000 birth of Lord Jesus would be right around that same time just a little little earlier but that gives you the idea and that's we're going to be dealing with this as we go along that uh, uh, there were four days up to the birth of the Lord Jesus and there's two days since then. We come up to uh, Pope Gregory the Thirteenth probably preaches the gospel more than any other human being, living human being. He's living even though he's in heaven, he's living. He probably preaches the gospel more than any other person because he's responsible for the calendar that began the AD in the year of our Lord at 1. That's where the calendar begins and works backwards through the to the time of Adam, B.C., before Christ, in the year of our Lord, uh, he had a calendar commissioned, and that is the most important calendar in the world today. It doesn't make any difference if you're a Hindu, Muslim, it doesn't matter. Even if you're Russian, it doesn't matter. Chinese, Chinese got their own calendar, but you know if they want to deal with with people outside of China, they have to go to the Gregorian calendar. There was a rabbi sitting in Jerusalem. He didn't believe Jesus is the Messiah. He preaches against it, but he's got some money. He calls his stockbroker. He said, Joe, 
I need to sell some stock. Joe says, when do you want to sell it? Rabbi sells him in the, on the Hebrew calendar when he wants to sell it. Joe says, Rabbi, I've told you, the whole earth does not operate on Jewish time right now. You're going to have to pull out that calendar in your drawer that is centered on that Jewish carpenter that you deny is the Messiah and tell me the date that you want to sell your stock based on that. And the rabbi groans and he pulls it out and he said September 3rd of 2023. I kind of I put this a little bit in advance. So the rabbi, even though he denies that Jesus is the Messiah, he's forced to use a calendar that begins with the Lord Jesus. I think that is so neat. 1948, Israel. I was born in 46. Yes, that makes me more than 59. I've been lying about my age forever and it's starting to catch up with me. 1948, Israel's been back in the land from the late 1800s. They've been buying the land from the Arabs over and over again. And so finally, after the end of World War II, they finally decide that they're going to allow uh, a homeland for the Israelites. And so in 1948, Israel becomes a nation. I want to read to you what Isaiah says about it. This would now be 2,700 years in advance. Isaiah 66, 7. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came upon her, she delivered a son. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall a land be born in one day? Shall a nation be brought forth in one moment? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the point of birth and not cause to bring forth? Says the Lord, shall I, shall I who cause to bring forth shut up the womb? Says your God, Rejoice with Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and be glad. For her, all you who love her, rejoice with her, enjoy all you who mourn over her. I'm back. We're going to take go all the way up to the year 2000. Note these scriptures that are written underneath the board. I'm not going to try to read them all. They're all related, prophecies related to uh, the end of the sixth day. I'll read to you from the epistle of Barnabas. Now this is not the gospel of Barnabas. It's the epistle of Barnabas. And the epistle of Barnabas is accepted uh, much more than the gospel is. Barnabas 15.4 Give heed, children, what this meaneth. He ended it in six days. <laughs> this is the reason why I don't recommend people read the King James language. I'm not even sure what that word is. This that in 6,000 years the Lord shall bring all things to an end. For the day with him signifieth a thousand years, and this he himself beareth me witness, saying, Behold, the day of the Lord shall be as a thousand years. Therefore, children, in six days, that is, in six thousand years, everything shall come to an end. And he rested on the seventh day. 
This he meaneth, when his son shall come, and shall abolish the time of the lawless one, and shall judge the ungodly, and shall change the sun and the moon and the stars, then shall he truly rest on the seventh day. Seven days of creation also represents seven millenniums of man on the earth. Did the Lord Jesus plan for man to rule the earth for six days? The answer is no. The tree of life was in the garden. Man could have ruled the earth for eternity because he had the source of life if he had not sinned. The Epistle of Barnabas, I encourage you to look it up and read it. Two thousand years, if there is four days or four thousand years from Adam's creation to the birth of the Lord Jesus, why didn't the Lord come in the year 2000 to rule the earth? Maybe the six thousand years begins with another event other than the birth of Adam. When Adam sinned he, sinned, he ended his own endless rule and began the finite rule of Satan. Adam gave his authority to Satan, 1 John 5.19, but the Lord Jesus limited Satan's rule to six days. I believe Adam sinned 4,000 years before the Lord Jesus made the atoning sacrifice for Adam's sin. That would be 3967. The end of the first 4,000 years of Satan's rule would be 33 AD. The end of the six days would be 2033. Why didn't the Lord Jesus take control of the earth when he was raised from the dead and defeated Satan. The Lord Jesus began a 2,000 year period where there are two kingdoms on the earth, the kingdom of the Lord Jesus and the defeated kingdom of Satan. The Lord Jesus wants a bride that chooses his kingdom. Now, while there is a choice, he wants friends that choose him over self. The seventh day, when does the seventh millennium start? Uh, years ago, as I was reading the book of Revelation and different things like that, contemplating prophecy in days, I happened to see a video of a rabbi that said that the Jewish perspective of the Messiah, not Jesus, just the Messiah in general, is that he would rule from heaven for seven years and then come to the earth and rule for eternity. And they took that based on David ruling from Hebron and they said that there's a very a similarity between the word for Hebron and heaven in Hebrew and they, they took it as a sign that the Messiah would rule from heaven for seven years so whenever I started reading the book of Revelation based on that, took a completely different perspective. You see the Lord Jesus basically controlling what's going on on the earth and absolutely tormenting the Messiah, I mean the, I'm sorry, the false prophet. Uh, if you want more information about the rapture, the end times, I'm not going to try to deal with the tribulation period and all that in this video. I have a video series that's called, I Miss the Bus, Now What? And it deals with the rapture of the church, the things related to the end times. I highly encourage you to set that. I think there's a set of four of them. Uh, and there's a special message in there to Islam. When the false messiah makes the agreement with Israel beginning the seventh millennium, he will end the rule of Satan. That is one of the most curious things. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27, that section of Daniel, you need to read the entire book of Daniel, but 
but uh, that chapter 9, it's a little bit of hard reading, and so I didn't try to read it in this particular setting. If you watch my videos, it'll make, uh, it'll make a little more, more sense to you. I missed the bus. Now what? It was, it was aimed at people that missed the rapture to let them know what's next, what they can expect to happen. And it isn't good. End of the days, here's what a fisherman filled with the Holy Ghost can write about the end times. 2 Peter 3, 8. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord. A thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about His promise. As some people think, no, He is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. There's, there's your scriptures, that's especially one right there. New heavens and new earth. Scriptures for the Revelation, 2 Peter we just read. The beginning of the eighth day. Peter again, 2 Peter 3.13. But we are looking forward to a new heavens and new earth. He has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in His sight. Be sure the Lord Jesus knows your name. A lot of times in the church they say, know the Lord Jesus, know the Lord Jesus. Well, it's more important for Him to know your name. I want to read to you from the parable of the virgins, uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 11. This is talking about when the ten virgins are waiting on the Lord to come to go with Him uh, for the wedding. Five are wise, five are foolish. Read it's Matthew chapter 25, verse 11. Much later, the other virgins, the silly ones, showed up and knocked on the door saying, Master, we're here. Let us in. He answered, Do I know you? I don't think I know you. So stay alert. You have no idea when he might arrive. I deal with this much more in the videos on I Missed the Bus. But the idea is that there were ten virgins all waiting for the rapture of the church. But you know, he only took out five and those were the ones that he made his bride. You saw the heavens and the earth that I had right to start with. Well, those are all going to disappear. It's going to be really hard for the, the people that deal in physics to understand how a, a universe that they thought was expanding all the time it's just going to disappear. And so it's going to be real important to be with the Lord Jesus whenever that universe disappears. Now He's going to bring a new universe, a new earth. For all of you flat earth people, I want you to know something. I've flown almost, in an airplane, I've flown almost around the entire 
earth. I have yet to see an edge. I want you to know whenever the new heavens and new earth come, it's going to be a happy place. Lord Jesus is filled with joy more than any other person in the universe. He's happy even with what's going on in Washington, all the crazy stuff's going on in the world, all the pandemics. He's still happy because he knows what's ahead. He's already won. He's just waiting for this whole process, this whole process to unfold. And once it's done, well then he's going to bring in everlasting joy, peace, happiness. Can you imagine a kingdom, a universe that is built on happiness, righteousness, and they're not going to be any grumblers. There's not going to be anybody that's all humbug. No, they're all going to be gone. Everybody in this universe is going to be happy. And they are going to have joy. Uh, Psalm 16, 11 says, In your presence is fullness of joy. So all of you that give me a hard time, I want you to know the Lord Jesus is the one that told me to do this. Joy, walk out your life in joy, in peace, and don't worry about all the other stuff that's going on around you because we are destined for a universe that is happy. Goodbye.